A group of people once found a long-lost message that could tell them how to live forever. This message had been banned and kept secret for hundreds of years because it was so strong. This made them very happy. But as they tried to figure it out, they saw that some puzzle parts were missing, which made it hard for everyone to see the whole picture. They were afraid that people would not find the treasure at the end of the map without all the hints. If that happened, they would miss out on the key to eternal life. What scientists found in 1945 could completely change how we think about life, death, and the future. They found a group of old writings that had been hidden for hundreds of years near the tombs of Egypt. These manuscripts contained texts that were so powerful and controversial that the early church did not allow them to be used. The Gospel of Thomas was one of them. It is a book that promises to hold the key to eternal life. However, what was so bad about these old books that the church felt they had to hide them? You might never look at the world or yourself the same way again after you answer these questions. Dolores Cannon was a pioneering hypnotherapist and past life regressionist who spent more than 40 years studying the mysteries of the human soul and the universe. She can help us find answers in the stories of the past. She writes about what happens to the soul after death in Between Death and Life, Conversations with a Spirit. His study and findings connect ancient knowledge with what we know now, which makes her ideas very valuable. The Gospel of Thomas is not like other books in the Bible. The traditional Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John tell about the life and actions of Jesus Christ. These Gospels, on the other hand, are a collection of 114 sayings that people say Jesus said. This book stands out because it focuses on esoteric teachings, which are secret ideas that only a few people can understand. First line of the Gospel. These are the secret things that the living Jesus said and Didymos Judas Thomas wrote down. This introduction makes it clear right away that what comes next is not just any old text. It's a key to unlocking deep spiritual truths. The book is part of a larger collection of writings called the Nag Hammadi Library. This library has writings related to Gnosticism, a religious and philosophical movement that put more value on personal spiritual knowledge than on following the rules. The Gnostics thought that a person could be saved not just by having faith, but also by having a deep knowledge of the divine within themselves. The Roman Orthodox Church didn't agree with them on this point, because those ideas were seen as wrong. Because of this, the Roman Orthodox Church banned Gnostic texts and punished their followers, which made their lessons almost impossible to find. One reason is that it paints a very different picture of Jesus. As a mystic teacher who uses metaphors and riddles to teach and tells his followers to find the truth within themselves instead of depending on outside sources. The kingdom of God is within you and all around you, not in mansions of wood and stone, is one of the most famous quotes from this gospel. I'm where you can split a piece of wood or lift a stone. This saying suggests that anyone who is ready to look deeply inside and around them can find divine truth. It's not just for people who go to religious ceremonies or organizations. Finding these texts was a huge deal because it gave researchers new information about how early Christians thought and how different people's views were in the first few hundred years after Christ. Before this discovery, most people only knew about the Gnostic view through the works of those who disagreed with them and called them dangerous heretics. There was a lot of silence around the Nag Hammadi library, but it gave us a unique look into the views and practices of a group. We can't say enough about how important this finding is. It raised questions about the main story of early Christianity and showed that there were many more teachings and interpretations about Jesus than what became accepted. With its focus on spiritual growth and knowing oneself, the Gospel of Thomas shows how different early Christian ideas were. It continues to inspire people who want to learn more about their own spiritual journey. 
The things that this story says Jesus said encourage readers to go on a journey of self-discovery that is very different from what most Christians believe. Let us break down some of the main ideas to see how they might lead to immortality. Not in the sense of living forever in a body, but in the sense of reaching a higher mental state. The thought that the kingdom of God is inside and around each of us and can be reached right now is one of the most interesting ideas in this gospel. This is summed up in the phrase, the kingdom of God is within you and all around you. In this verse, Jesus is saying that divinity is not something that is far away or limited to one place. Instead, he is saying that it is a part of our everyday lives and is just waiting to be noticed and understood. The attention shifts from religious practices on the outside to a process of awakening on the inside. It means that to really feel the divine, one has to look within and become more aware of the spiritual reality that is all around them. The process described includes looking for, discovering, and finally figuring out what you and the world are really like. They say that this path of self-knowledge is the key to living forever. If you find this exploration insightful and it resonates with you, consider showing your support with a super thanks. Your contribution helps keep this channel going, allowing us to continue uncovering and sharing deep spiritual wisdom. When you know yourself, you will know that you are children of the Living Father. This is a powerful religious saying. But if you don't know yourself, you live in poverty and are poverty itself. This sentence stresses how important it is to know yourself. This theory says that not knowing yourself is worse than not having enough money or other things. Knowing yourself means recognizing the divine essence inside you, which in turn helps you understand the world and your place in it better. In immortality, there is no physical escape from death. Instead, there is a transcendence of the limits of the material world. To reach this level of transcendence, one must change their awareness. By realizing and accepting the divine light within, they can reach a spiritual state that goes beyond the limits of this world. To this point of view, life means always being aware of and connected to God. If your leaders tell you, look, the country is in the sky, the birds will be there before you. The fish will be there before you if they tell you it's in the sea. Instead, the kingdom is both inside and outside of you, which makes this point even stronger. It questions the idea that divine truth can be found in places that are far away or impossible to reach. What we need is right in front of us, woven into our daily lives and into who we are. This message helps us understand something very important. The kingdom we seek is already here. It's up to us to see and experience it. Many people say, the one who seeks should not stop seeking until he finds. It will make him feel disturbed when he finds out about it. The change that happens when someone seeks spiritual truth is described by the phrase, disturbance will amaze him and he will rule over everyone. At first, what the person finds may make them feel uneasy. This is the disturbance. But this pain is an important part of the journey that leads to a deeper understanding, astonishment. And finally, control over oneself and one's spiritual world, reigning over all. The idea that spiritual growth and, by extension, immortality are not gifts from outside sources, but rather things that we achieve on our own, is one of the most important lessons we can learn from the Gospel of Thomas. This Gospel talks a lot about knowing yourself. It makes it sound like the only way to get to true understanding and the eternal life it offers is to really look into your own inner world. The Kingdom of God is within you and all around you, encourages us to see God not as something far away and different from us, but as an important part of who we are and what we experience. Seeing things this way gives us power because it makes us responsible for our own spiritual awakening. 
It shows us that we don't have to wait for salvation to come from outside sources. Instead, we can grow it inside ourselves by becoming more aware and understanding. According to the Gospel, these kinds of practices may help people find the truth, but they are not enough to give people the kind of deep, life-changing knowledge that frees them spiritually. Instead, it makes us want to go on our own path for understanding, where we don't find answers in doctrines but in our own experiences and insights. This change from focusing on the outside world to focusing on ourselves has big effects on how we live our daily lives as well. Because if the divine really is inside and all around us, then every moment, contact and thought is a chance to connect with that presence. Being aware of this can turn even the most ordinary things in life into holy moments that help us live a fuller, more honest life. For people who grew up in standard religious structures, these ideas may seem bold or even scary. They make us question ideas we've held for a long time and be open to new ways of thinking about spirituality. The Gospel of Thomas, on the other hand, is so strong because it doesn't give simple answers or reassuring promises. Instead, it forces us to deal with the mystery of life in a more direct and personal way. It tells us in this Gospel that spiritual knowledge and the essence of God are open to everyone who is willing to seek them with all their heart. It takes guts to go on this journey because the truth can be scary or even upsetting at first. But it also offers a huge change, from seeing the world as a place of separation and struggle to seeing it as a place full of divine presence and possibility. A lot of people are looking for meaning in their lives right now, but this gospel has a message that will never go out of style. The kingdom of God is inside of us, not somewhere else. In this case, true immortality doesn't mean living forever in a physical sense. Instead, it means rising above the illusions of the material world and connecting with the holy light that lives inside all of us and never changes. The Gospel's wisdom says that the deepest secrets are not in faraway places or hard-to-understand ideas, but in the simple but profound truth that we are already part of God. Thanks for coming with me on this trip. If this conversation made you think, please subscribe to this channel to become a part of our group. If you found this exploration insightful and it resonated with you, consider showing your support with a super thanks. Your contribution helps keep this channel going, allowing us to continue uncovering and sharing deep spiritual wisdom. You can find more material here that goes into more depth about the spiritual and life mysteries. Until then,